What's up everybody, it's Easy. bringing you a brand new Clash of Clans video. Th this video is actually a two-part video. The first part is only going to be about five minutes long. And it's just going to show the flex attack. The flex attack features the Valkyries. We have the new Valkyries out. New Max after the October update. And they are, they're awesome. Uh, you'll see right here. Every, every uh, replay in this video, is, they're all on dead bases. The second half of the video, we're going to kind of go into the pros and cons of attacking dead bases. There's definitely pros and cons to it, but first let's just start off with the flex attack. The way this attack is built, it has two walks in it. It has the Archer Queen walk, and then it has a Bowler walk. And this this is a Town Hall 11 attack, so we can make the Bowlers ourselves. So we'll bring five Bowlers, we'll put three healers on them. At, at the top left of the screen, we have an Archer Queen walk with three healers on her as well. And then attacking the core, we'll, we'll put it in a clan castle with giants, which will be max giants. Then we, we bring about eight of our own giants. We back them up with some wizards, and then we bring in the Valkyries, along with the king and the... Uh, what the hell is that called? Oh, the Grand Warden. <laughs> Sorry, I got stumped for a second. So, the goal is to keep the Archer Queen and the Bowlers on the outside of the walls. They have great range, so they'll be able to shoot over the walls and take out all those defenses and trash buildings that are on the outer outer edge. And then we're going to break into the core of the base with this big kill squad, wrecking ball squad, whatever you want to call it, that have the giants, the wizards, the king, the warden, and then the valkyries. And that combination of troops, that allows us to not have to pull the clan castle troops most most of the time. Uh, you can really just take care of them in... in, in uh, the middle of the attack uh, I do always bring poison spells because you know when you're farming you don't really know if, if they're gonna have clan castle troops or not but we use this attack in war as well especially at Town Hall 9 this is an elite Town Hall 9 attack as you get up to Town Hall 10 and 11 and you're having to deal with the infernal towers and the eagle artillery it gets a little more difficult but as a Town Hall 9 attack this may be uh, our clan has found this to be probably the best Town Hall 9 attack on the ground it's similar to the witch a slap uh, just the similar aspects to it uh, the only difference is is uh, you can do the slap probably without a town hall 10 in your clan and with this you have to have a town hall 10 in your clan because you have to have bowlers for one of the walks so here's the next uh, replay again dead base so it's a lot easier to attack the dead bases and again we'll go into this in a few more minutes and start off the same way now the, one of the really big advantages for using this attack is it is um, a mass type of attack where we're going to we're going to drop almost all of the troops within the first 10 or 15 seconds of the attack and this is great for several reasons one you can teach some of the newer guys in the clan i know by the time they get to town hall 9 they, they've got a lot of experience but still trying to master some of these uh, elite town hall 9 and 10 attacks they take so much timing and they're so delicate because of the troops they're using. You know, like Balloon is a huge attack, but but when you're attacking with Balloons, they are very, very flimsy. So, And they take great timing and, and there's a lot of steps you have to do and there's a lot of mid-attack changes you might have to make. With this attack, it's really not like that. You start off with the Bowler Walk, the Queen Walk, and then if you can get them to go around the outside, and you get them to go around the outside by taking out all of the outer trash buildings in that first wall as quickly as possible. So the, there's nothing to pull them into the middle of that uh, of that first wall. They start walking around the outside of the wall, and then you put all the other troops. They all bust into the middle. Uh, the 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 giants, they do a good job of breaking through walls on their own. Then it's not like having a golem taken for you that might get stuck on a wall and and, and be there the whole attack. The giants are going to keep on moving forward, and then you're following up with the Valkyries. Which you, if you put a rage spell on Valkyries in the core of a base, we all know what happens. <laughs> so great attack. Now, this is, I, I've never seen this in a video before, and this took me a long time. <laughs> uh, I, I literally fell asleep in the middle of doing this last night. What we did is we counted how many times, how many bases we had to go through until we found a dead base. So, and this was a tedious process. Um, it, it was almost as tedious as actually finding the dead base to begin with. 
Now, just to give some background, we have a couple guys in our clan that primarily will attack dead bases. And there's always questions. Why are there so many dead bases? We have people questioning if the game is, is, is um, losing its momentum because there's so many dead bases. And that's not the case, and I'll explain why. Once you get to Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 11, the troops that are attacking you, the, the armies are so big that your defenses, they, they, they have to go through so much to defend the base. So it may only take one or two attacks before your Infernal Towers are empty, the, the crossbows are empty, uh, the Eagle Artillery, all those take, they, it takes resources to fuel every single one of them. So let's say uh, you're busy for one day. Well, at the end of that one day, your base will look like it's a dead base. So these aren't people that have not been on their account for two or three weeks. Uh, it could be just one day. Or may, uh, I'm not now. This is not a fact either because I'm not exactly sure uh, exactly the time. But uh, I know that I come. On, I, I'm on every single day, and that I have come on and seen uh, that my defenses, my the expos are empty, or the, or the infernal towers are empty. So someone took a shot at me, that, and I had a dead base, and I. Had been on, uh, you know, uh, I'm on every day, so <laughs> some fun facts too. This is what you could be doing if you weren't looking for a dead base and taking 12 minutes out of your life, nexting to the next base, which that's basically what it took is about 12 minutes in real time for me to next until I found a dead base. I think I passed up at least 10 bases that had a million in resources and probably about the same 10 bases that had 5,000 or more in Dark Elixir. And now the reason why you'll have players pass up these massive bases isn't because um, they don't want the resources, of course they do, but because a lot of these bases that have these huge amount of resources on it are also max Town Hall 11s. And it may look like, uh, you know, it's, it's a great find, yes, but then you have to deal with this max Town Hall 11 and you won't always get all the resources, number one. Uh, often they'll have it defended well enough where you won't get to the dark elixir at all so you know you might next for two or three minutes to try to find a good base you finally find one you find one that has a million resources 5,000 dark elixir then you attack and you end up getting beat to death and you walk out of there with a hundred thousand of golden elixir and no dark elixir and it's a failed attack you lose trophies because you're attacking a max town hall 11 with a player that has taken time and made a, a the perfect base and they're out there believe me so that that's one of the reasons why people attack dead bases it, it's because without those three top elite defenses it's it's just not capable of of defending nearly as well as it would be without them which you know i know it's obvious but that's why people will invest the, the type of time it takes to find nothing but dead bases now, ironically, we, I didn't show the next attack, but it literally took me three or four necks, and then I found the next dead base. But, in the meantime, we finally find one. Finally. And this is a typical dead base for Town Hall 11. Just under a, a, a million in resources, over 5,000 in Dark Elixir, and then, uh, this is, a, I'm in Champ 2, so then you have another 1,000 uh, bonus, and then I think another 100,000 each or something. Uh, for the bonus in um, for champ two, and so another question I get asked all the time: What's the best league to to fight in if you want to find dead bases? And there may be a, a, a the there may be an answer for that, but what I've found is I have several accounts. They're all in different leagues, and I find them in every single one of the accounts. Uh, we have m maybe the richest league there is would be the Crystal League because we have guys that just stayed out in Crystal League because of how good the, the, the farming is there. But I, I've been in Champ uh, 3, 2, and 1 for over a year. And if I want to look for dead bases, I might have to invest 10 minutes per per farm. But I'll find one within usually within 10 minutes. And it may sound crazy. And if, you, if you're new to the game... It, this might this might be something that's just ludicrous to next a hundred times or 110 times like we just did but that's n more common than you may think and you can appreciate it now while you can because once you get up into the elite and you're up in the the highest levels uh, it doesn't you can't just next and next and next because it takes so long to find your opponent 
because you know in champs there's pub I don't, I don't know the exact numbers again probably millions of players in champs but you get up in a legend league now you're dwindling down to a much smaller number so you 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 don't have the luxury of just being able to hit next and next so while you do while you're still building up and while you're still upgrading everything nexting to find the right base is vital and now here's another one this this right here was done by flex luger that, and that was 7,000 Dark Elixir and well over a million in Elixir and Gold. So, I mean, huge, huge bases out there to find. And now, when this guy, uh, CK is his name from Top Korea, when he comes on, he won't really miss anything. Because most of this stuff is in those max collectors that he's got. They may have been building up for 12 or 14 hours or whatever it is. And by the time Flex hits it, it will start it will start building up again. And if he doesn't come on for another five or six hours, it will be like he never even got attacked. He, he'll have a minimal amount taken out of his storages, and most of that's taken out of the, the collectors. So it's not doesn't take too much of an impact on the player. Not that you're really worried about what it does to the player. <laughs> so going into the dead base a little more, the, the pros and cons. Well, we already know what the pro is. The pros are that it's easier to attack them, that the, the resources on them are just huge. I mean, the, the bases that we find, especially at Town Hall 10 and 11, um, you, you're dealing with every attack, you got over a million in resources, usually, I won't, you know, usually over 5,000 Dark Elixir, plus your bonus. So we're talking about huge bases that you find. And then on top of that, you don't lose trophies very often either. Because most of the time, if, if you bring a good army, and let me just touch base on that real quick. <coughs> uh, we, I suggest to every guy, everyone, every guy and girl in our clan, not to build farming armies unless they are specifically built farming armies like the Goblin Knife. Uh, because you, re you really want to practice on your war attack. Now, this doesn't apply to those that are not interested in war. There are people out there that have already done the war scene. They're done with it. They don't like it. They don't like the competition. Uh, they don't like the way the clan acts. Some clans get way too serious, and uh, it kind of ruins it for people. Uh, so if you're not in war, okay, farm however you want. You, you know, you're you're obviously taking yourself out of part of the game, so just do what you want to do. But if you are still participating in the clan wars, I would strongly suggest that you use your war attack in in farming raids and I'll use myself as a as the perfect example for this uh, I spend a lot of time outside of the game doing clash stuff too we have the website have the YouTube channel so I'm, I don't spend as much time probably as I should attacking and, and that will show up sometimes in war where I will attack a base that I know I can three star and I won't and it's my lack of practice so how can you fix this well you use your war attack while you're farming as well so before you do your war attack you'll you'll build your troops and you'll attack five or six times out in the farming realm and that will kind of tighten up your 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 timing and all the things that are so necessary for a war attack now yes um it, it can hurt a little bit because you may attack five or six bases that don't have clan castle troops and your your particular attack might be very dependent on taking out the clan castle troops and killing them and then continuing the attack from that particular point in order to complete the attack so and, and i get that so th there are times where farming isn't the best answer to practice and in that case you use your friendly challenges and your friendly challenge uh, several times before your clan war attack but um i would definitely suggest use your war army to farm with that will make you a better attacker in war uh, you it literally you can't go wrong if you do that now I'll use myself as another example I used to use the goblin knife to farm with and we have several videos out on it. if you don't know what I'm talking about check out the channel um, and and find the goblin knife and you'll see what I mean it's a it's kind of a unique attack where you use goblins to break into the core and it will take out the dark elixir in, in, in the town hall real quick well, I kind of lowered my guard, and because I was doing so well with these goblins, and they were and they were so capable of taking out Town Hall, and so capable of taking out the Dark Elixir storage, that I that they started showing up in war for me. And you just don't really want to use goblins in war, and no matter how well you you farm with them. There's still certain troops that you kind of want to leave on the bench for war, and I think goblins might just be one of them. 
Now granted you might want to take a couple of them to try to trigger some traps or whatever but um, if you're doing the goblin knife and war then you're kind of missing the point and you, and you really need to rethink your war strategy. <laughs> so other than that though use those war troops in, while you're farming and that will help. So now what's some of the cons of, of only attacking dead bases? We'll go right back to the same point. It, it was, that will actually hurt your war attack because you don't have the you don't have the eagle artillery, you don't have the infernal towers, you don't have the crossbows, so you're not used to having the same impacts. Your time is going to be a little off. Your spell usage, you know, a lot of players are, are very frugal with their spell usage while they're farming. Uh, me personally, I usually spend the entire army every time I farm. Uh, I usually go after bases that have so many resources on it that I can I can use the whole army and I'll still make a big profit. So I, I use the whole army. Uh, I don't want to make that mistake where I'm holding on to a spell that if I had used it earlier I would have three star but because I held on to it well then I lose so many troops that when I finally use the rage spell let's say uh, I was on six troops and it doesn't do anything so um, I I'm real careful about uh, the spell placement and trying to get all the spells in while I have the most troops on the board that way it has the most effect so um, if you're only attacking dead bases you're not going to get the same feel as if you were attacking these elite bases. And I, I've also suggested to people not to lower your your league level down to gold or, or silver or lower. I mean, I, I know guys that will go they'll go way, way down because it's easier to farm down there and it's easier to get all of the loot down there. But then it hurts their war attack and, and it can really hurt a lot. Well, looks like we are out of time. C come check out the channel. We got. 150 videos in the channel so far I'm trying to build up a quality channel for all, every, all the clashes out there so sub to the channel appreciate everyone for watching to the end that's a rarity <laughs> I enjoyed making the video even though it took two days hope you enjoyed watching it till next time it's been easy take care everybody <laughs>